inside this lesson, we're going to take a look at what are called linear systems, and we're going to see how we can use matrices to talk about linear systems. Now, the first thing I want you to be able to understand is what's called a linear equation. And this is any kind of equation where we have some variables, but all of the powers of our variables have to be equal to 1. So let's take a look at some examples of equations that are linear and some that are not linear. Okay, so first we have the equation x minus 2y equals to 0. And what we're looking for is we're going to look at our variables, which are x and y, and we're looking to see if they have a power that's higher than or less than 1. And in this case, both of the powers of x and y are 1, so this has to be a linear equation. Now don't get tricked here. We're allowed to have different kinds of numbers. We could have numbers like e or pi or square root of 2. Those numbers don't matter as long as the powers of our variables are 1. So this equation here, 3x plus y minus z equals square root of 2, is still linear. Okay, here's an example of an equation that's not linear. Um, we have x squared plus y squared equals to 4. This is a circle of radius 2. And you'll notice that the powers of x and y here are not equal to 1. So this is not a linear equation. If we ever have a coupling of two variables like x times y, that's not going to be a linear equation. Also, you can be on the lookout for powers that are less than 1 as well. So in this case, z is to the power of 1 half. So that would also make this not a linear equation. Now for us in our course, we're going to be working with linear systems. And a linear system is essentially just a collection of linear equations. It could be two linear equations, three, or more. And there's usually two important numbers that we're after. We're after the number of equations we have, and we're after the number of unknowns, or the number of variables inside the linear system. And we'll say that it is an m by n system, or a system of m equations in n unknowns. So for example, down here I have one, two different equations. I have x plus y minus z is 3, that's our first equation. And I have x minus 2y plus 4z equals to minus 2, that's our second equation. And we have three unknowns here. We have x, we have y, and we have z. So this system down here would be called a system of two equations in three unknowns. One nice thing about linear systems is that it can be written in what's called matrix form. That means that we can take a system of linear equations and we can actually write it using matrices. And the form is AX equals to B. I'm going to show you a couple examples coming up here that illustrate this idea. Um, but what I want you to walk away with right now is A represents the coefficient matrix. So this capital A is a special kind of matrix associated with the linear system that contains all of the coefficients of the variables. X is a matrix that contains all of the variables in one column. It's a special matrix called a column matrix, and we use the bold face here just so that you don't get confused with the regular letter X. And finally, B is another special matrix. It's one column only, and it contains all of the constants that are on the right-hand side of our equal sign. And again, here I use bold just so that we don't get confused with a regular letter B. So let's take a look at how this works. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the two easier matrices to write down first, and then we'll work on the matrix A last. Okay, so first what I'm going to write down is I'm going to write down the matrix X. Now X represents all of our three variables, so X, Y, and Z. This is what we would call this boldface letter X. Now next we have the boldface matrix B, and B represents these numbers over on the right hand side of the equal sign. So B contains the numbers 3 and minus 2. And of course the last matrix we need to get at is what we call the coefficient matrix, and we write this one as matrix capital A. Now it contains all of the coefficients of the variables on the left hand side of the equal sign. 
So I'm looking at all of the numbers in front of my variables, and I have to include the signs. So here I have 1x, 1y, negative 1z. So I have 1x, 1y, negative 1z. And moving on to the second equation, we have 1x minus 2y's, 4z's. 1x minus 2y's, 4z's. So there's our coefficient matrix A. And this is what we call matrix form. In this example, I'm hoping that you'll understand that the process works in the other direction, too. So we could start with matrix form, AX equals to B, and we could have to try to find a linear system based on that matrix form. This is our coefficient matrix. Each row of our coefficient matrix lines up with these variables here. So I'm going to have 1X minus 1Ys in 0Zs inside my first equation. So we'll write that out like this. We'll write 1x minus 1y plus 0z. I'm not going to write that one down. And that's equal to 1. The second row tells me that I have 2x's minus 1y's and 1z. And all of that is equal to minus 2. And finally, the last row of my coefficient matrix, I have negative 1y's, 6z's equal to 0. And there's the corresponding linear system for this particular matrix form. So I have just one last idea to introduce in this video, and that is the idea of what we call the augmented matrix. Now in order to form the augmented matrix, what we're going to do is take the coefficient matrix A and extend it by one column. Okay, the augmented matrix is A, and we extend it with the column B. When I write my augmented matrices, I usually write this symbol in the middle, this little vertical line, just to remind me where the equal sign is. Okay, so let's take a look at how to find the augmented matrix. Now what we have to do is we have to consider matrix form. We're going to find the coefficient matrix of our two variables, x1 and x2, and then we're going to find the B matrix for the numbers over here on the right. Okay, so we have that our coefficient matrix A is going to be 1, 1, 3 minus 2, 1, 0. And our matrix B is going to consist of these three numbers, minus 1, 5, and 3. And what we want to do is we want to form a matrix by putting them together. Okay, so our coefficient matrix was 1, 1, 3, minus 2, 1, 0. And I'm going to put a line here. Remember that this line represents the equal sign. And over on the right-hand side of this line, we'll attach the matrix B, 1, 5, and 3. So here's our augmented matrix for the linear system. So, not much to say here at the end of the video, other than we're going to explore how we can use elementary row operations on the coefficient matrix and the augmented matrix in order to help us solve linear systems. Alright my little epsilons, stay positive.